Hello! Welcome to Yellowstone National Park. I'm Ranger Molly and this is the third video from Yellowstone's educational team on Facebook Live. I'm standing here at the northern edge of Yellowstone National Park between two mountains which are in two different states. So behind me on my right is Sepulchre Mountain. It's on your left. That rises to about 9,600 feet in the state of Wyoming. And on my left, your right, is Electric Peak, which rises up to almost 11,000 feet in the state of Montana. Both of these are still snow capped and we're expecting more snow on Saturday. So we're pretty excited that we get to film down here at 5,300 feet, more or less. Uh, next to Gardner, Montana. It's dry, it's warm. You can see the green, gray, and brown sagebrush, rabbit brush habitat behind me. It's a sunny day with a high of maybe in the 50s. We'll take it. We're, we've had a long winter here. It's the perfect day to look for some wildlife like the elk, pronghorn, and bison that might come into the shot. One of those mammals is going to be our feature topic today. Ranger Kate is going to step on in just a couple of moments and she's going to tell us all a bit more about Yellowstone's iconic bison. So be sure to share this video with your friends and your family and make sure to leave us some comments uh, and some questions in our comments section because we're going to try to answer some questions at the end of this program. We're also going to drop some links of our own in that comment section. If you are a teacher or a parent at home with some children, we've got a specialized worksheet just for this program. So click on our distance learning links to learn more about our educational programs and view that worksheet. Without further ado, here's Ranger Kate. Good morning. So we are here behind me. There is a nice male bison. So our visual back there. But today we're going to be talking about these beautiful creatures that are part of the greater Yellowstone area. These bison have been here since prehistoric times and bison once roamed North America in the tens of millions. So thinking about where you are viewing from today, at some point there might have been bison roaming where your backyard now is. So it's kind of cool to think about that. But here in Yellowstone, they're an iconic animal and we're going to go through a little bit of their history out here and also then lead into how they follow the seasons and what exactly makes a bison a bison. So it's a unique day today. Again, we are going to make sure that we are practicing our bison safety as well here. So if you do see us leave, it's because we are practicing our safety. But the history of bison out here, like I said, they once roamed North America in prehistoric times and in large, large amounts. But over time, there were many people out here, humans, using these lands. And the humans that first used these lands and really utilized the bison were the Native Plains tribes. And the bison was their one-stop shop. It provided everything for them. Their food, their shelter, clothing. They even used them for spiritual ceremonies. And it was an important part of their culture. And over time, as Western expansion started to move out this way towards the greater Yellowstone area, the U.S. Army put in a campaign to try to eliminate the bison so that way they could better control and possibly eliminate these indigenous tribes out west. And so their goal to do that was to remove bison in the tens of thousands. And it wasn't only the U.S. Army market hunters and also poachers came through and what they were doing were removing bison to sell them for their heads, for their pelts, for their leather, so that way they could make supplies and tools and things with these animals. And so by the late 1880s, bison herds had been gr greatly diminished out here in Yellowstone, a couple hundred maybe. And then by the turn of the century in the 1900s, at that point, Yellowstone National Park had established its boundaries but there were only about 24 individual bison living in the Yellowstone area. That's not really a population of bison. That's almost their extinction point. So they went from extinction to now this process of recovery. Ironically, the U.S. Army decided to work on that process of recovery for the American bison, these North American bison 
And they did this using a method called husbandry. So there were bison ranches in Montana and Idaho and Wyoming, and they were able to take a few bison from these ranches, bring them into Yellowstone. They kept them safe by feeding them, keeping them on ranches here in the park, and then also able to feed them. And in that process, they were able to breed them with those 24 lone bison that were still a part of the national park. So the bison that are in Yellowstone are not interbred with cattle. They are not part of that population. They are true bred bison, which makes them very unique in this area. And so they went from almost being completely eliminated to that recovery process. And that's kind of what makes them iconic is that as humans, we did this. We put them in one direction and then pushed them into another. But what exactly makes a bison a bison? If we're scientists and we're thinking about it, we're gonna talk about their scientific name so everyone all over the world can understand exactly what a bison is and what we are talking about. So their scientific name is bison bison, which is kind of silly. We don't need to say it more than once. We're just gonna say it once today so that way we know what we're talking about. And thinking about these bison, they have different elements that make them unique. One, as everyone always sees, are their very large heads. And they have these horns, which are part of their body. They are bones. These horns are part of the bison skulls. And these large heads kind of make them iconic because you see them. And they have those horns and they're covered in a sheath which is made up of keratin, similar material to your fingernails or a bird's beak. So it's that protective layer around their horns that make them so scary looking with those horns. Both males and females do have them. And thinking about their size, the bison that are walking behind me, if they are males, are probably close to 2,000 pounds. So they probably weigh as much as your large car. And then the females can vary around 1,000 pounds about as much as your normal size car. So again, they are very large animals. Both males and females, when they are adults, do have a nice dark chocolate coat. They have longer fur along their legs and curlier, thicker furs on their backs to keep them warm. Again, these bison are living in Yellowstone. It's not springtime here all year round, so it does get really cold. And the males and females, once they are born and start their life cycle, at about two years, they've reached breeding age. So those females at two years old now are ready to breed. Males, on the other hand, do need a little bit more time and they need a little bit more time to mature to really become those big, strong bison. So that way they can become dominant and show who they are. And so they wait about five or six years before they start breeding. And as those bison continue to grow, it's because they spend nine to 11 hours a day just grazing. So a bison's daily activity is walking and eating and walking and eating. And they do that for quite a while during the day. Pretty good lifestyle if you ask me. You get to wander Yellowstone and eat the whole time. Sounds pretty good. And as you go along and think about these bison and experience them, whether you're reading about them online or studying them with us here today, these bison also are very social animals. So they are not really a social animal that they're talking to each other, but they do hang out in those herds. And so depending on the season, the herds might be larger. And a lot of times these herds are run by the elder females. So these older females are the ones that are keeping them all kind of together. Depending on the season will determine the size of the herd really based on their availability of food and things like that. And so as the seasons go along, we'll kind of talk about what each season means for a bison. And now that it's springtime in Yellowstone, that means it's calving season. Babies are being born. And the babies out here, they are called red dogs initially. So you can see that their fur is kind of more of a burnt red color versus that sort of chocolate espresso brown color that I showed you with the adult pelt. And those red dogs, when they are born, they come out ready to play. So when they come out, they are again that bright red color. They stand out from the rest of the crowd. 
But the moment that they are born, they're learning to use their legs, they're learning to suckle from mom, and they're learning what mom sounds like, looks like, smells like. Because when they're in those big herds later on in the seasons, they don't want to lose mom because they are easily predated, being that they are smaller animals than their mothers, which are a thousand pound mother. So thinking about these bison, they're going along and that's at springtime. So they're running, they're jumping, the seasons are changing, more grasses are growing in, and now we hit the summertime. So July and August out here in Yellowstone can be an aggressive time for our bison, thinking about those males that are ready to mate. So July and August is rutting season, is what you'll hear called out here in Yellowstone. So in those warm summer months, everyone's feeling powerful, and the male bison are now going to start establishing their dominance. And they do this in a few ways to prove that they are the perfect mate for that next female bison and to have their babies. So the first thing they'll do is they will wallow. So they're rolling around in the dirt, this male bison is leaving his scent behind. So he's leaving his scent so that way a female can go, mm-hmm, you smell pretty good. I think you're who I want. And in that process, they'll also bellow. I'm not gonna bellow on camera for you guys today, but we have dropped a link for you guys to go to our Yellowstone Sound Library. So at home, you all can experience a bison bellowing in your living rooms. So that's one sound that you can go and listen to. So they're gonna bellow, make this loud noise to show they are dominant and strong. And finally, those horns. So bison have those big horns. Those males are going to fight. You know, everyone wants to fight to prove that they're the strongest and the best. And so those male bison come on and they start fighting. And then finally, when they've proved that they are the one, they find a female that agrees with them. And they will follow them around, lead that female around until she's ready to mate. They will mate. And then that female will gestate and be pregnant for the next nine to nine and a half months. And so after that, the males are no longer those dominant males. They go off and now they become the lone bison. So those older dominant males tend to stick by themselves. They don't follow those herds run by females because they've done their duty at this point. They've, you know, done what they need to do. They proved who they are. They don't need to follow around anymore. And so once these females have become impregnated, Again, they spend those next nine and a half months full of a baby bison. And in that process, we lead into the seasons of fall. And fall, late fall, in the upper elevations in Yellowstone, a lot of times can lead into snow. And those bison are hanging out in those upper elevations. And then as the snow falls heavier and winters get harsher in Yellowstone, those bison herds get a little bit smaller and they start to head down to lower elevations, maybe even around the thermal features because they don't want to be trudging through all this deep, heavy snow because what do they do most of their day? They forage, even in the winter. So they're roaming and eating and looking for food. And in the winter, it's much harder to do. But their anatomy of a bison has allowed for them to kind of survive in the winter. They have that thick fur and they have these really unique vertebrae and their skeletal structure. So these back vertebrae kind of represent that large hump that you might see on a bison. And that large hump allows to hold their big heavy heads. So in the snow, unlike other ungulates or hooved animals that will kind of scrape at the snow to move it out of the way, Bison swing their head from side to side, and that's why they have a large head and those large vertebrae that allow to hold the muscles. So one of their vertebrae looks quite different from ours. Maybe the bottom part looks more like our vertebrae, and that allows for them to hold that heavy head and swing it. It'd be like if you all decided to plow your driveways in the winter with your face. Be kind of hard, but we see bison out here a lot of times in the winter with snow-covered faces. And those snow-covered faces show us that they've been looking for food. So a lot of times, this is what we might see. The bison are digging their heads. They can dig them upwards of three feet deep. So about to your knees or so, a bison can dig into the snow to find food. 
And that's also because they have a really good sense of smell and sight. So these adaptations help to survive in the greater Yellowstone area, which makes them so unique. And so we've talked about those spring, that summer season and into the fall and the winter of what makes bison special. But thinking about if and when we're visiting Yellowstone and even any national park when it comes to wildlife safety, bison safety is a very important one. And so we always joke that a bison's tail can tell it all. And so if you see a bison's tail just swinging gently back and forth, they're probably contently eating and foraging and being comfortable. But if the bison's tail is standing up, that probably means one of two things. It's going to charge or discharge. So a discharge is what we think it is. As an animal, it does have to defecate, but then leading on to its charge. So an animal could feel threatened, a bison could feel threatened, and that leads them into wanting to charge something that threatens them. So safety in Yellowstone, we say 25 yards away from any kind of wildlife, especially bison specifically, and that's about two school buses away. So we can view a bison's tail from a happy distance using binoculars or our own naked eye, but we don't want to approach any further. Again, maybe during rutting season when the males are more aggressive and they're kind of on edge, we don't want to get much closer to a bison than maybe three bus lengths away. Well, again, we practice safety in Yellowstone when it comes to viewing wildlife. A wild animal is unpredictable and we don't know what they could do at any moment, even if we think that we're reading their minds by reading their tails. And so today we've talked about a lot of really cool stuff out here with bison. There's probably been some that have walked behind me today. So you've gotten to kind of experience what it is to be in Yellowstone during the springtime and leading into those beautiful seasons. But a bison is an iconic animal. And thinking about the icon, if you come to the National Park Service and you see the arrowhead, the bison sits nice and centered in our arrowhead. And these arrowheads are on our sweaters, they're on our hats, they're on our jackets, they're on our signs. And that bison is an iconic symbol of the National Park Service. And the bison have also been introduced as the national mammal of the US. And so thinking about how they've gone from near extinction to recovery, it makes it a great symbol of the United States. And so for you guys in the comments section is throughout this time as you watch this video, I want you guys to say and leave a comment about what a bison means to you. It's going to mean something different for everybody and we want to hear what they mean to you. And I'm going to take some time and answer any questions that you guys might have. And we'll hang out here until those questions have been asked. Okay. Awesome. So this is Molly speaking again. Um, Kate, we did have a question about bison in winter. Do you happen to know how many bison die in the winter time? So in the winter time, depending on how harsh of a winter it is, but on average, nine out of a hundred bison will die in the winter. So it's not too many, being that we have quite a large population, but it does happen out here. Cool. And they were also uh, wondering where you might find bison in the winter. So the bison out here, like I said, they're going to go to those lower elevations and a lot of times those hot springs because they're looking for food and they want to be warmer. And those hot springs tend to melt all that snow, which makes it easier for them to move around. Cool. Can you tell us the difference between uh, buffalo and a bison? That's a great question. So what is the difference between a buffalo and a bison? Like I said, today we are being scientists, so we were using the scientific name of bison. Here in North America, buffalo just refers to the same thing. It's more of a common name that is used. If you are in other countries, though, a buffalo might refer to a completely different animal. So out here in Yellowstone and within the United States, a bison and a buffalo are easily interchanged. But if we want to be scientific, we're going to stick with bison. Okay, cool. So I think, folks, if you're watching, please continue to comment. We're getting a lot of thank yous, um, a lot of great jobs, a ton of likes and little heart emojis popping up in the corner there. So I think this is a great broadcast. If anyone has questions that we haven't had a chance to answer, please continue to drop those in the comments. We will review them and share this link with your friends because this will be something you can watch after we're done broadcasting. 
All right, and to say bye to you guys, I have one joke for you all that hopefully you can share back home. And what did the dad buffalo say to his kid when he left the herd? Bye, son!